Nat Turner was a slave rebel who, uh, he was a slave in Virginia in 1831 and he led this rebellion um, in 1831 in Virginia that is the most fully realized slave rebellion in the history of the United States. The least is known about him in, in some respects and as compared to other slave rebellions. Um, but he's sort of the most celebrated in another respect. So there's both sort of this paucity of evidence and then this great interest in him because of the sort of, uh, this, the revolt did not succeed, but it, it came the closest to actually succeeding. Well, so there's this historical moment and really the only real documentation that we have of the 1831 revolt is this uh, thing called the Confessions of Nat Turner that was taken by a lawyer um, while Turner was imprisoned waiting to be executed. Um, and it's pretty unclear how much of this is actually his voice and how much is the lawyer's. So there's no sort of indication when one person is talking and when sort of the editor is taking over. And it's just a 31 page pamphlet so it's very short. Um, and it's a really compelling narrative but we don't really know how much of it is true. So there's that sort of instance, that's 1831. Then in 1967, William Styron wrote this novel, also called The Confessions of Nat Turner, which was really used this, the Thomas Gray Confessions from 1831, but then sort of retold the story in a novel length form, told from the first person perspective of Nat Turner. Um, so I'm really interested in both instances equally, maybe even more so in this 1967 retelling for what it tells us about the sort of permutations of race and violence and change in uh, American life and culture. Styron's book was extremely controversial when it came out. So it was initially greatly celebrated uh, and then there was this real backlash from sort of the black radical uh, wing of, of American life. And so when that happened, the sort of planned movie, the movie rights for the book had been sold for a lot of money. Um, the movie was canceled. Uh, and this sort of, this has sort of just revolved, this controversy about the book has sort of just sort of spun out for the last 50 years. And there have been documentaries about sort of the relationship between all these sort of disparate pieces, the 1831 Confessions, Styron's novel, and you know, the truth, the movie, whatever is sort of the, the character of Nat Turner, how he lives in our culture. I went down to Styron's papers at Duke, uh, which is where they are, to really just investigate this one episode, um, which is sort of the creation of this novel. So looking at things basically from 1960 to 1967. Um, and what I found there was really much more compelling. I mean, he was an incredible correspondent, so there's many, many people that he was writing about. And this project actually was something that he wanted to do for much longer than just the decade that he spent producing the book. So as late, or as early as the late 1940s, he was writing to his sort of mentors and saying, this is the book that I want to write. And they said, you know, you need to hold off on this for now. Um, so. That sort of led to me writing to his widow and saying, I'm really interested in doing a sort of larger work. I spent two years in England after my undergraduate work, before I went back to graduate school. Um, and my time in the UK really just opened my eyes to a whole different way of looking at things that I'd been studying previously. Um, and I think that especially the sort of different relationship between the Aboriginal population and uh, Australians is really fascinating and really offers a whole nother sort of twist on native peoples, race relations, all of those things. And I think that the sort of chance to do that in a new place is really an incredible opportunity.